Good morning, good morning. How are you, YouTube family and St. Paul Christian Fellowship family? Good morning. We are back, Deacon Carl Jones, my right-hand man and I. We are back here at St. Paul Christian Fellowship, 2238 Courtney Avenue in the lovely city of Norfolk, Virginia, 23504. And so if you're on, ring the bell, sound the alarm, subscribe, tell somebody that we are back to give some encouraging words today uh, based on what has just happened. Hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. I hope that you gave thanks, uh, not just on that particular day, but that you gave thanks or that you will give thanks every day, all the time, you know, because that is the will of God. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse uh, 16 and 17 says, that's the will of God that we give thanks in everything. And even in these tragedies that's happened in the last couple of weeks, or we've had them just, you know, there's a murderous spirit going around with suicide collaborated with it, hatred and rage. And we've seen it. We've seen it reveal itself and we've seen it active. Uh, in the last few years, it is getting worse. It's been going on for some time. If you can look as far back in the book of Exodus, when God allowed the deaf angel to come into Egypt, but we're not talking about that because that's something entirely different. This is something that's evil and it is wicked and it is from the adversary, the enemy himself. And so this morning, we just want to give condolences. We want to shout out to the families, comfort, strength, and peace from God, our Father. Uh, you know, we're going to really have to lean in to the Lord at this point, where we're going to have to really trust him, where Jesus uh, talks about in John 14, verses 1 through 3, where it talks about trust in God, trust also in me, let not your hearts be troubled because he's gone away to prepare a place for us. So he's preparing, but are we prepared for the place? Are we prepared even for his love, his forgiveness and his reconciliation? And this morning you can be because these deaths, these tragedies, these devastating things that have been happening around the country, out in Colorado Springs, here in Chesapeake, Virginia, at Walmart and other places all around us, this kind of stuff has been going on for some time now. It's escalating. And uh, my point is, if the Lord called you on today, would you be ready? Because Jesus in Matthew chapter 25 told us to be ready. He's coming like a thief in the night, the second coming. And he's talking about his coming back for his church. But not just that. Uh, he wants us to be ready. And I've shared with y'all in the past how we can be ready. You, you be ready by accepting the love, the forgiveness and the reconciliation of the Father. That's the definition of the cross. And so if you accept the love of God, for God to love the world, he gave his only begotten son. Father, forgive them for they do not understand. These were Jesus's word on the cross at Golgotha. And then Paul uh, wrote to the Corinthians that the Father has given us this ministry. Jesus has given us this ministry, has entrusted us with this ministry called reconciliation, which means restoring relationships, bringing uh, together a unity, uh, bringing together wholeness, bringing together uh, uh, a family, if, if I may say, uh, not just a black thing, you know, not just a, a black coalition of pastors uh, at a prayer vigil, but uh, the body of Christ coming out and sharing. Uh, not a black thing, not a white thing, not a Native American thing, not a Chinese thing, a Japanese thing, a Greek thing, an Italian thing, but we're talking about the body of Christ and the body of Christ come together to say some encouraging words to strengthen these families. Do you realize that the families that lost loved ones, the victims that were murdered, uh, in uh, Chesapeake and out in Colorado Springs too, I'm sure. Uh, they didn't even have a Thanksgiving. They couldn't because they were preparing for a eulogy. At UVA, young man, uh, football player Chandler, he's, they're having his eulogy today, memorial service at the Rock Church at 2 p.m. And so, uh, you know, those families too were affected, whereas 
They didn't have a Thanksgiving. How could they have Thanksgiving dinner and enjoy the, the unity of family and just coming together, family and friends, and enjoying one another and laughing and joking and reminiscing? How could you? How could you? you? You grieving over a lost loved one, especially in a tragedy. And so let me share these words with you on the day because my heart is heavy for all of these families, for the UVA football players, for the people at Walmart in Chesapeake, for the people in Colorado Springs. I don't care if it was LGBTQ because they are people, they are humans, and we ought to love them. And so, uh, you know, the fact of the matter is, is that they had surviving family. Some of them had wives, they had children, they were siblings, brothers or sisters, they had aunt, uncles, nieces, nephews, cousins, they had church family members, people that loved them, and uh, they're gone. They're gone. And so God has given us a wake-up call. I just believe that when we have these type of tragedies take place, death is a warning. It's a wake-up call. And it's giving you time while you have breath in your body and you have life in your body to get right and make your peace with God because it's coming. It's coming to all of us, hopefully not in a tragic way, a tragic sense, but, you know, uh, even folk that's died of COVID, uh, that died of COVID, uh, I believe that was a tragedy to me. Uh, that was something that I believe that was launched. It's not a conspiracy. It was launched and it killed millions of people around the globe. And it was a tra tragedy and a travesty. It, it wasn't good at all. And uh, so folk are still grieving uh, over the loss of their loved ones from COVID because it's still taking place. Folk are still going in the hospital, getting on respirators and all that stuff, not coming off. And uh, God forbid, uh, you know, I pray that the Lord uh, will be the great physician and heal their bodies and, and bring them back to life and give them a testimony, give them a witness. But uh, today, uh, we're just, our hearts are heavy here at St. Paul Christian Fellowship for the loved ones uh, that are having to plan for eulogies. They couldn't even have a Thanksgiving dinner or they couldn't even enjoy themselves because they're grieving. You know, the youngest person that was shot and murdered, that was killed at Chesapeake was a 16-year-old getting ready to graduate, had been working. Uh, I guess while he was going to school, prepping himself, probably, possibly for college, and uh, who knows, but his future got cut short at 16 years old, and so that family is grieving, and so we should be praying intensely, fervently praying, asking God, please comfort these people, please, Lord, strengthen these people, please uh, give them peace in this time and strengthen them uh, where they need it the most. And so that's what we're doing here at St. Paul. We, we, we believe in prayer. We're trusting in the Lord. It wasn't the Lord's fault. I think some people would blame God because they would say, why would God let this happen right at Thanksgiving? Uh, it wasn't God. I'm sorry, y'all. It, it wasn't God. It was an evil act of a person's choice and decision. They had probably premeditated it. I even prayed for that young man's family. He had a wife. He was 31 years old. His life was cut short, too. In his letter, he felt like he was being bullied and harassed, and people uh, looked at him funny and different. And so he had probably walked around for who knows how long, months, years, contemplating on doing this particular thing. And then he just all of a sudden snapped. But that was demonic. That was a demon, some murdering spirit and a suicide spirit because he killed himself after he did the damage. And so praying for his wife, his family, he probably has a mother and a father and siblings and who knows, they haven't brought all that out yet, but I'm sure he has family, um, you know, and uh, you know, it's just, it's, it's uh, heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking and uh, it's heavy and it, and it makes your heart heavy. And uh, so anyway, let me look at something from uh, Psalms 46. These are some uh, uh, couple of verses <clears throat> in this text um, that, that make so much sense 
concerning what we're going through right now. And in Psalms 46, this is David speaking, or this is um, the sons of Korah, a song of Alamoth. And so um, it says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And so I think that we need to draw near to God so that he would draw near to us. James says, draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. This is a drawing time of these tragedies that have happened all over the United States and even global. With Ukraine, people are dying over there every day. They're just getting bombed uh, by the bully that's over in Russia. You know who he is. Uh, they're getting killed every day. They had to evacuate their homes and leave their homes and their cities and their whole, you know, life. But here, it speaks of a God who takes care of our past, takes care of us in the present, and takes care of us in the future. He's a very present help. He's a refuge. That's somewhere where you can go and you can feel protected. You can feel secure. You can feel, you can, you can feel like there's, there's something built around you that, that guards you and that keeps you safe. A refuge is a place where you can go and you can kind of hide yourself. We can hide in the Lord. We can, we can, he's our refuge. He's our place of our secret place, if I can use that term. He's our secret place. And when it says that he's our strength, he, he's, he's our stronghold. He, he's the one that gives us the power in our weakness. Paul talked about that when he asked the Lord, can you take this thorn out of my flesh? And, and God told him, he says, my grace is sufficient. Where you're weak, my power is made strong. And so he's our strength this morning. And so a very present help in the time of trouble. He's omnipresent. David talked about him in Psalms 139 where he says, where can I go? Where can I flee from your Holy Spirit? If I go up into the heavens, you're there. If I go down into Sheol, which is another term for Hades or hell, you're there also. If I go across the wide ocean, you know, if I go across the whole Atlantic Ocean on the other side, you're there. Where can I flee from your spirit? Nowhere. And you shouldn't want to flee from his Holy Spirit. You shouldn't want to run from him. You should want to run to him. This is the time that we should be running to him. We should be running for our lives as if our lives is at stake because it is. Your soul is at stake. You should be running to the Lord. And I mean, I'm talking about pushing it maximum. You ought to be running to the Lord and uh, be able to trust him. And this, this verse at the end says in verse 10, be still. And know that I'm God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in earth. He says, be still. That means you get quiet. That means you stop what you're doing and you, you, you be still long enough to hear from him. You, you be still long enough to receive from him. Whatever it is, whether it's blessings, benefits, benevolence, uh, whatever it is that he wants to do for you, you be still and know that he's God and let his will be done on today. We are so sorry, families, uh, from the Walmart families, uh, from um, those families out in Colorado Springs uh, at the club, those people. We are so sorry for your loss. For the people at the Municipal Center uh, just a few years ago, uh, we had a mass shooting. For the player, football players at UVA, those families, we are so sorry for your loss. We are so sorry. Uh, it is a tragedy. And we know about it because it's, it's, it's come to my house. It's, it's come to my house. It's been a few years now, but there's still no real closure concerning losing my grandson uh, at, at gun violence uh, in the street, shot down like a dog. Uh, so uh, I get it. I understand it. Uh, it's hard. Uh, it's going to take a long time. We still, uh, we're not uh, over it whatsoever. No closure. Um, and uh, it's hard because you think about your loved ones right around this time of the year, Thanksgiving, Christmas time is coming up, their birthdays and stuff like that. You think about them and, and you miss them and, you know, you love them. And so uh, our condolences we are so very sorry. Our condolences, you, you are in our prayers. We are praying for you all. 
uh, asking God to strengthen you uh, where you need it the most and that he will bless you, and give you what you need. He says, I will be exalted. Be still, he says, and know that I am God. I think about Isaiah when he says, I saw the Lord high and lifted up lofty. Uh, I saw his train. He saw his back. He saw him in his royalty, in his regalia. He saw him in his, you know, he, he was the king. He is the king of kings. And he said, I saw him sitting on the throne. And so don't think that God doesn't know uh, what's going on and what's happening. He's still sitting on the throne. And so uh, Deacon Carl Jones and myself, Pastor Antonio Willard here at St. Paul Christian Fellowship, 2238 Courtney Avenue, North of Virginia, 23504. Uh, we uh, send our condolences, our love, our prayers, and we hope and pray for God's best. And so until the next time we meet, grace, peace, and mercy be yours from St. Paul.